south. In silence, I see them drift away as they cross the wall in step. A horizon of towering palm trees is already swallowing their blurred silhouettes. A tiny point in the distance is what each one becomes. How I wish I could have tied my destiny to one of them and be a knife tied to his waist. I would have loved to have become a full stop, a comma in his book for destiny fulfilled. With shotguns slung over their shoulders, they walk away. Duck and wild boar hunters making their way through the cane fields. I catch their laconic words and cover their silences with others harvested from my own crop. Only misfortune dictated that I was born in the city, away from the fields where my people's roots sink deep into the ground where my cousins built a reed house for visitors on the river bank. There, where an afternoon slumber takes you back to a primeval time, with its endless hum felt weaving through the folds of silence. And on nights that don't ring out with happy wedding songs, from time to time, the song of a lone neighbor comes to your ears and you imagine that it is directed just to you. To you, the only witness of grief from afar which names you today. Of the insects in the fields, I know their buzz in all their variations. From the dates of the palm groves, I know how many births they treasure. From the birds, I can guess their colorings by the sound of their songs. I learned early to avoid wild boars, incapable as they are of seeing the slant. Of the dead children's corpses floating in the water, I am the orphan. From pollen, I know its indefinable taste. And from roses, the scent that generates a tinge of voluptuous vertigo. I know the desert lands, and I know the cultivated fallow fields. Like an orange at the bottom of water, the south rests in me. Without it, I move through the world deprived of a part of myself, without a doubt, the most beautiful part of me.